بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد جزء نمبر 23 أو بارة نمبر 23 concludes with the rest of سورة ياسين and so Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions some of his آيات some of his signs in the creation such as the sun and the moon and how each of the planets and the, the heavenly bodies are rotating or orbiting uh, in a perfect manner and with perfect precision with perfect precision and so this proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created uh, everything uh, because none of this could have happened by chance uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions uh, in the rest of Surah Yasin uh, uh, the reality of uh, resurrection and how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to bring life back to the dead. And so after we have become dust and bones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is nothing for him. Uh, you know, it is no difficult task for him to bring that individual back to life. Uh, after that we have Surat As-Safat. Surat As-Safat. And Surat As-Safat basically uh, mentions the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning the uniqueness of creation. How, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the creation around you and how it is unique and perfect. And, you know, uh, uh, no one else is able to create anything similar to that. We also have, uh, Allah mentions in the beginning of Surah Al-Safat, uh, the, uh, the angels and also the jinn and how they would, uh, they used to try to eavesdrop and, you know, uh, steal the, 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 the news that, it, that was uh, mentioned in the heavens that was coming down to earth. Uh, and also, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention, mentioning some of the prophets. Uh, especially Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and how he uh, you know uh, how he dealt with his people and how he destroyed their idols and then it also mentions the story of uh, how Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, called upon his son Ismail and told him that I have uh, seen in my dream that I am supposed to slaughter you and so the lesson that we learn from here is uh, the reaction of Ismail alayhi salam and how he submitted completely without any objection. And so this shows us the, the tarbiyah that Ibrahim alayhi salam gave his son. I mean, which son would uh, you know, readily, readily submit to, to such a command uh, unless it was due to the tarbiyah that he had received at the hands of his father. Uh, the surah ends, Surah Al-Safat, uh, or before that, we also have in Surah Al-Safat a description of the people of uh, Paradise and the Hellfire and how, uh, uh, you know, the, the, some of the believers, they will say that, you know, we used to remember, we used to have disbelieving companions, companions who were disbelievers. Uh, where are they today? Wait, where are they today? And they will look in the hellfire and they will see them in the hellfire. After that, towards the end of Surah Al-Safat, Allah mentions that the messengers will be victorious. The end result is that the messengers and the believers are victorious. And this is something that we must believe in with certainty. That no matter how much uh, loss we are seeing, uh, how many defeats we are seeing, uh, the end result is that we will be victorious. Then we move on to Surah Sa'd. In the beginning of Surah Sa'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, mentions, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically mentions uh, also again some of the uh, stories of the prophets uh, and also uh, emphasizing on the issue of uh, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the reality of the revelation and also the coming of the Day of Judgment. It mentions uh, the story of Dawood alayhi salam 
uh, and uh, you know the, uh, the the two people who disputed with one another and came to Dawood alayhi uh, salam to be a judge between them. It also mentions Sulaiman alayhi salam and the powers that Allah gave him and how he was not uh, you know uh, arrogant about that, but rather uh, he thanked Allah subhanahu wa taala for that. Uh, then after that. It, at the very end of Surah Sa'd, we have the, the, the mention of um, the story of Iblis and how he arrogantly refused to prostrate to Adam. Uh, after that, we have Surah Az-Zumar. The beginning of Surah Az-Zumar is concluded by this juz. And this juz basically uh, focuses on uh, the issue of Tawheed, uh, singling out Allah for worship. And it also mentions uh, the importance of ikhlas, sincerity uh, of intention. Uh, it also mentions uh, in the beginning of the surah about uh, the believers, some of the characteristics of the believers, uh, such as you know their reaction to when they hear the Quran and other characteristics. And uh, the remaining of the surah moves on into the next juz, so we will cover that in the next session بإذن الله تعالى until then سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته